If you love sewing like I do, you know you can't do without your sewing machine. You want to spend more time being productive instead of troubleshooting. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, a very warm welcome. Hope you're here to stay. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Press the notification bell so anytime I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Now let's get to why we are here today. I've been sewing for a long time now, even though I feel pretty confident about my skills. To be honest with you, it has been a long and bumpy road getting here. That's why I want to help you out by showing you what to start with. And so today we are going to learn the anatomy of your sewing machine. It's very crucial for you to know the parts of your sewing machine and what they do. Without that, you wouldn't know where to turn and what to do. So that's what we are going to go into today. So without wasting much time, let's start learning. So here, starting with the hand wheel, this is the big knob located on the right side of your sewing machine. And it's used to adjust the needle height and make manual stitching. And to lower your needle before starting to sew. And you always turn clockwise towards you when using it. So when you turn clockwise, you can see your needle moving down. Okay. And it comes up like that. So that is the use of this. And when you're about to sew, you're going to use this to pin your fabric down gently before you start to sew. So that is the use of the hand wheel. So here, the next thing you should know is your bobbin wind. This is your bobbin wind. And this is used to wind thread onto your bobbin case. We are going to talk about this later onto your bobbin case. Um, it locks into place like that to engage the bobbin motor and not the main sewing motor. Okay, so once you put this on, which I'm going to demonstrate later, you put this on once you turn this on it locks this so it only wind your bobbin and your bobbin winder okay that's the next one so the next one we're going to talk about is your spool pin we have two of them one located here and the second one is here that I don't regularly use it's in here somewhere okay that's, this is it so this goes here and it will hold the thread down or this way okay we'll talk much about it but I, as i said i don't usually use this one so the spool pin holds your spool of thread in place which i'm going to demonstrate to you you can use your thread this way or that way it, it holds the same thread you can use when uh, winding your bobbin okay some machines come only with the vertical one some come with only the horizontal one and my machine comes with both so you have a choice of using any one of them so that is the spool pin on your machine and we'll demonstrate later how to use it so here next we have the thread guide and the thread guide is the whole system that feeds the thread through the machine and maintains proper tension while sewing. So it's all the system right here, okay? And once we start threading, you're gonna know how that is done. And it's numbered, so it's easy to just follow the guide. It's the same system, the thread guide, come around that small disc here to wind your bobbin, okay? So here, the next one is the take up lever and it's hiding in here. And when you turn your wheel, 
it breaks the needle up as you can see the needle is coming up once i turn it so you turn it to the highest position and then it makes the lever appear so here the take up lever is a metal hook right there as you can see it pop up okay so it's a hook attached to your thread guide up there and it pulls the thread from the spool okay pulls the thread from the spool through the machine so that guides it all the way there until you get up here to thread it so down below we will go ahead and talk about all the pieces you find here and we are going to start with the presser foot so here the presser foot is controlled by the presser foot lever which mine is located on the back of the sewing machine like that this is the presser foot le lever and what it does is look when you push it down okay it puts the presser feet down and it helps you sew so when you're done sewing you have to push the lever up again okay and then it brings it up before you can pull your thread out and you're done sewing mine is on the back of the sewing machine some sewing machines have this on the side like that okay so when you're sewing the presser foot pushes the fabric against the feed dog the feed dog that is down here and pulls it evenly through the machine okay the feed dog that's the feed dog and we will talk much about that too later when we start to so you get to understand that a little better so here we have the needle and the needle clamp screw that brings the upper thread through the fabric to join the bobbin thread okay so you can see this a little hook here when i'm trading it you're going to see that better so your needle comes all the way and it has to come through that side before it gets to the needle and so that it helps you create stitches and it's held in place by the needle clamp screw so you turn this clockwise and the needle is released and when you put the needle back you turn it anti-clockwise and it locks the needle in place so you can use it to sew here underneath the needle is the feed dog and this metal tooth moves up and down like i'm showing you can you see it looks like tooth that's the feed dog it moves up and down pulls fabric forward under the needle so you see it moves and it pulls your fabric so that is what makes your fabric go smoothly under um, the machine and there's more to that um, depending on what type of fabric you're using you might have to drop the feed dog which i'm going to show you later so the next thing we are going to talk about is this whole thing you see here and that's the stitch plate and this is the metal housing that the feed dog is sitting inside okay the feed dog is sitting inside the stitch plate and it also contains the thread the hole or space your needle goes through right there the space your needle goes through there's a small let me see let me adjust my yeah so you can see the your needle goes through to join the bobbin thread to form a stitch okay and measurements to help you guide a consistent seam allowance while sewing these are the measurements next we have the bobbin case and cover and this black knob when pulled to your right lifts it open um, so you can see the bobbin case holder okay and it has direction on how to put 
put in your bobbin and thread it well so it will work and how to drop it in so i'm going to demonstrate all of that to you later but this is your bobbin case and that's the bobbin case cover okay so let's go to the next step so this is where the bobbin sits and joins the thread from your needle okay when you thread your needle the needle thread comes on this side and then your bobbin thread which i'm going to demonstrate later how to put that in so that is the bobbin case and this is going to demonstrate how it's done and as you can see i've been sewing for about two weeks i haven't cleaned it i did that to do uh, how to clean your sewing machine so i'm going to demonstrate that for you so if you don't keep your machine in tip-top shape you are going to have problems all the time your machine is not going to last so that i am going to show you later how to clean your sewing machine there's two more things here to know this comes down when you're doing your um buttonholes you use this so when we get to doing our buttonholes i'll show you how it's done and here is the automatic threader okay this here tr helps thread your needle automatically and it's very handy if you you have bad eyes like i do otherwise you can hand thread it when we get to that we'll work on it so next here is our stitch selector and this has um all the stitches you would want to use for your sewing and this is the regular stitch we have we have this for um buttonholes and all the other stitches on the dial here so um some come in a knob form like mine and the computerized ones you have it in a computer on the screen here and you can just press and select i have a machine like that um but this is just a knob you, you turn the wheel to make a zigzag zigzag stitch and all the other stitches you can just turn the wheel okay and so this is your stitch selector you have to know that next up here is as you can see it's a stitch length adjustment knob okay so this is what makes you select uh, the length of your stitch and usually i leave mine at three and a half okay so you can refer to your manual uh, to show you how your machine comes but regularly mine i leave at three and a half so next is a stitch width adjustment dial here and it's accompanied by a zigzag stitch so you can see um, how it goes from um, tight to loose okay it helps you adjust how wide your needle travels when moving from stitch to stitch so usually i put mine so you can go as far as to six okay and i usually put mine on two so my stitches are not too small or too wide when sewing but um, usually when you buy a machine, it comes set up standard. So you can leave it on the two. Next thing I have here is your needle position. And I have three positions. And this one's help me when I'm um, when to the left or to the right. Basically, when you're sewing, you leave it in the middle one most of the time. And when sewing my... Um, zipper or cords depend on which side you want the cord or the zipper to go you can use the left or the right to get it closer to the tooth of the zipper so um, basically it has to be in the middle next here is the tension adjuster knob or dial and this controls the tension your disc apply to the thread it's very very important the newer machines like mine house the tension system inside the machine okay it's inside you you can see it and controls it with a knob or dial like i have here on the top or front of the sewing machine so here 
usually i keep it on four so the next we have here is our reverse button or backstitch so this is very essential part of your sewing machine and we usually use this from the beginning of sewing and then at the end of your sewing to um, keep your stitch not to um, unravel so it's very very necessary that you know how to use this which we are going to do later so next we have a detachable arm and I have to pull this off like that okay and this is very good not all machines have it it has um, it allows you to sew uh, round like armholes or pants um, legs you put put it on here it, it's rounded so it allows you sew things that are round and this compartment comes with it that I like that houses all your foods and your needles so you don't lose them there are a lot of things that come in that i've taken most of them out that i'm going to show you how they are used but you can keep all your supplies here so you don't lose them and it's easy to assess finally this is your foot pedal and just like a car this is how your sewing machine goes so we have here the cord and where to put it in so you put it in here and this is the on and off button right here and this definitely goes on the floor and when you press your foot on it it helps your machine so so um that's it i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and in our next video we are going to learn how to trade our sewing machine and finally get to start stitching and i know that's what you're waiting for so take your time learn go back and watch the video and know the names of the parts and look at them very well know their names and so that when we come the next time and we are working on it you wouldn't be found wanting and so use your um, manual that comes with your sewing machine and if there's anything you don't understand you can reach back to me and i will explain further to you give this video a thumbs up if you love it share to your friends and family and as usual the love is deep and i know you love me too stay safe until i see you next week love you bye